Aleph, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Utopia Seattle's live luau. My bad. So you cannot blame me. I am, you know, more of a face for you all to see. But when it comes to this, well, blame my parents. My younger brother took all the brains. I just took the looks in the family. You know, but welcome to Utopia Seattle's live luau show in compliance with all of our QTPI and our lovely people that are running this from backstage from our lovely entertainers to the backstage from the CEO of Utopia Seattle from the um, to the management and board. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Ariana Princess Alba. I uh, will be your host for this evening and for this uh, first Luau show, and then next week, and then the following week, and then the week after that, you'll be seeing this face. But the entertainers will keep, they'll keep me changing out. They're going to probably attack me after this, but it's okay. Welcome. So tonight, we're going to have a lot of fun. Some of you are used to seeing me. Some of you are sick of me, but you don't have a choice. You're stuck with me. So tonight, I want you all to please, if you don't have yourselves a drink or two, please, I invite you to join me, Get be comfortable, get in your best and your most beautiful Polynesian attire, Put a stay in your hair, have a drink in your hand, a coconut, maybe a pineapple or two. Grab your partner, make sure it's your partner, not somebody else's partner. And enjoy this night with us, okay? Don't be like me. Well, if you do grab somebody else's partner, make sure that you return the partner at the end of the night. It's not yours to keep, it's yours to use and borrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna turn it over. We're going to get this show started. Um, I believe we're going to have it with, I have a program here. So if you would like to share anything with us, go ahead and share your comments, share your, your thoughts, and all the other beautiful things you want to share. But we do have a performance, an opening performance by the beautiful Tatiana. Let me grab up her bio. She will be opening our, Tatiana will be, uh, Kauhane will be opening our show, our live virtual luau with a performance straight from the heart of Polynesia or from the Pacific Health. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a big round of applause for the beautiful Tatiana. Aloha. So I'm going to share Oli with you folks. And it goes like this. Oh, I keep on making a lot of a lot of a lot of a Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first uh, ever um, virtual and luau. Um, my name is Isis Angayo Tibuhanen. I am from Pangpango on the island of Tutuila in American Samoa. And I am the co-chair for Utopia Seattle. And I would like to pass it on to my lovely co-chair, Jeremiah, to introduce himself before we move on with the program. Hello, my, my name is Jeremiah Allen, and I'm the co-chair next to the beautiful Isis Hanan. Um, I am a citizen of the Confederate Tribes of Siletz Indians, as well as the Nez Perce Tribe. Um, and before we get started, um, I just wanted to um, acknowledge our sponsors for the show. Um, first, at the hibiscus level is Group Health Foundation. At the 
bird of paradise level, we have Alaska Airlines and United Indians of All Tribe Foundation. And then at the Plumeria level, we have Pride Foundation, Malina Healthcare of Washington, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation of Auburn, and Paris Insurance Services. Thank you. We're really um, happy that you could join us today. Um, we didn't have time to introduce our lovely host. Um, Ariana Princess Elva is 34 years of age from the beautiful village of Ma Malailoa in American Samoa. She is a proud transgender female soldier in the United States Army, um, serving active duty as the voice of Marne in Fort Stewart, Georgia. Um, she's also the creator and founder of Coco Comedy and Coco News. Um, so thank you for joining us and um, we look forward to celebrating with you and back to um, Ariana for the rest of our show. Thank you. Aloha, welcome back everybody. Thank you, Isis, and thank you, Jeremiah, for that um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful introduction. Although you didn't have to put the age there, but some things, some secrets and some skeletons just can stay in the closet. I guess. Now that was a um, again a big round of applause for the beautiful Tatiana. Um, that was a, a Ole, I believe. If we could bring her back up real quick, so we could. Uh, is she still here with us, Tatiana? I want to learn how to do that, uh, a Ole. I've always tried all my life with my um, with my soft voice, but some things just God will not allow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, those were our co-chairs. That was um, Mrs. Isis Honan and Mr. Jeremiah Allen. Thank you very much for gracing us with that live and beautiful introduction. With our sponsorship acknowledgments. And now we will go into our, we're going to get into our performances. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with this um Utopia Lad Luau, a virtual Luau. We also want to acknowledge the, the work that Utopia does for our QTPI and LGBT trans community in Utopia, Seattle. They have done tremendous and wonderful work in not only reaching out and keeping um, our QTPI and trans community afloat and helping them with all of their different needs. We also want to make sure, um, they also have been um, employing a lot of our trans community. They have, um, have, they found a foundation and a home, an umbrella for a lot of our trans community. And I personally would like to give you all a round of applause and say thank you for your hard work to um, the CEO, Taffy, and everyone that's with, that works as hard as they do with Utopia Seattle. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we do have a fundraiser that we have um, that we've set that if you would like to donate anything from a dollar to five dollars, ten dollars, or whatever that you can afford at these trying times, we would greatly appreciate anything that you would give us to help us help others and especially those who cannot help themselves from now until the end of time, as long as God can keep us on this earth. Now, some great things. We do have a raffle. We do have a raffle and some great giveaways. Now, the giveaways are, we have two round trip tickets sponsored by Alaska Airline. Yes, two round trip tickets that you can, um, you can buy or purchase the, uh, what do you call it? The raffle tickets. Now the prizes or the winners will not be announced tonight. The prizes will be announced on our fourth, our last day of our luau or the winners for the prizes. Now each ticket will be raffled off um, individually and separately. And Alaska Airlines sponsor not without, you know, just you can only fly through Alaska Airlines. You can't hop on another airline and say, but they're in partnership with, you know, and Alaska will, Alaska Airlines will proudly and happily take you anywhere you want to go, anywhere in the United States of America. Y'all were hoping I'd say world, huh? America. You can't even go to Samoa or American Samoa because 
The door is closed. The borders are closed, hunty. We're keeping COVID out of the islands. Now, if you want to buy, if you want to purchase a ticket, please, the link is pinned below on the screen that you see. The link is pinned on the screen. Just click on it, purchase your ticket. Now's your chance to fly free anywhere you want into the, to the United States. You can fly to Utopia, join them, watch the pageants in October, or you can fly me, join me. Let's go shoot some guns together or catch some soldiers, either one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now let me introduce to you all our very, very, our, our very next uh, performer, a special performer that is. And I'm, I've seen, uh, I'm seeing this performer with such a beautiful smile, very beautiful smile, captivating actually. His name is William Nutupu Giles. Oh, this is so hard when you do it where everything is so virtual. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, William Nutupu Giles is a BNB champ, a Kundaman fellow, and New Pick winner. Their work explores erasure, how we change to chase this fora, and the waters that connect us. Will's work has been featured by NBC News, the National Park Service, Button Poetry, and HBO. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a big round of applause and welcome William Nutuku Giles. Hey, Talo Falava, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I don't think I have a very nice smile, but I'm very, very complimented that you did. Thank you for introducing me that way. That is a, that's, that's a new thing to Will's bio. Um, very, very grateful to be here this evening, though. Um, yeah, I'm here. Uh, I also want to say that uh, when I hmm, should have prepared something. Instead, I'm just going to babble it all of you. No, um, my name is William Nutupu Giles. I was born and raised on Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, my family comes from, my mother is from New Zealand and my grandmother is from Samoa. Um, so I am literally just like a diaspora chasing uh, <laughs> Islander, I suppose. Um, but I'm gonna share with you some poems today. And if you would like to write along, uh, take out a notebook, uh, write with me. I will also kind of throw off some props here and there. So, uh, uh, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to open with a poem called Oral Traditions. Uh, this is a group piece that I wrote with a, a very close friend of mine and a mentor uh, who got me started in writing, Travis Kaululau Thompson. Um, this poem is called Oral Traditions. <sighs> For over three and a half millennia, the islanders of Pacifica spoke without alphabet or written language so spit me a poem with the names of the wind and the rain, the sacred space of your gods and ancestors. The people of Oceania retained all knowledge and all history through the shaping of spoken word into muscle memory. Every story, a poem. So spit me a poem of how the world was made beginning with your grandmother's face. Every speck of land on this earth was poured from the thick cocoa of her eyes or your island and continent broken only by her blinks. You see an ocean erases all that is written in sand, so my ancestors etched everything into the tides of their tongues. Now, as a historian, while I retell the tales of my ancestors using a colonizer's English, I am unsure if my act is one of resistance or oppression. I sometimes see my tongue the way an amputee feels the itch of a dismembered limb. It aches when I say my own middle name, Nuhupu. See, I was born with the pride of my history, but no knowledge of my language, speaking with the pride of a skin I lived with, but not in, imagine. Imagine the entire knowledge of the world and with what you could remember. In ancient Polynesia, children with the best memory skills were chosen to be the storytellers, the culture keepers, they were hand-picked to be poets. Weaving today's events into yesterday's lore, they were practicing immortality and breath weaving generations through the genealogies until foreign diseases interrupted entire bloodlines with death. 
In just over 100 years of the arrival of the West, nearly 90% of the native Hawaiian population was dead and their language was banned. Only one in 10 survived. So a knowledgeable person's death was the same as a library burning down today. We are still sifting th through the ashes of a culture once deemed illegal. We are the descendants of the 10% who learned to speak and smoke. And I sometimes still see my tongue as just a colonizer's shovel. With most words, I'm unsure if I'm burying my ancestors or digging them up. So spit me a poem about rebirth and redefining home, about the ways your forefathers died and the ways that you have grown, though I do not sound like my ancestors as to practice their traditions. These bones remember their stories and I cannot escape the colonization of my people any more than I can escape their near extinction. So that I can escape their near extinction. So my own personal culture, it must be more than language, it is practice. So I will spit you a poem without alphabet or written language weaving today's events into yesterday's lore. I will spit you a poem with all the knowledge of the world ending with what I can remember and more. I will teach a hundred years of colonizers that a language is the most dangerous weapon you can give to a bloodline of storytellers, culture keepers with a responsibility to speak no matter the split tongues. So spit me a poem about the ways you learn to mourn and love and I will call your mouth home. Spit me a poem that is more rope than it is stone that I will weave your story into the library born within these bones so that our stories will never have to die. So that our stories will never have to live alone. Oh, um, yeah, I, I, um, I don't have much in the way of happy poetry, so I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, uh, sorry to start the, the evening off on such a downer, um, but it, it's really hard to be a poet who writes about history and not write about very sad things, um, especially, uh, 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 yeah, um, I don't know. I think that, that also remembering like the hard things and finding the words for the things we're afraid of something that's, that's taught me to be braver and something that poetry has literally given me a voice to do. Um, so I'm really, really, really grateful that I get to be, uh, yeah, sharing that with y'all. Um, I have everyone staying safe, uh, hydrated <laughs> in all of the ways that, that need to be. Um, anyway, uh, I want to also share, like I said, uh, I feel weird just yelling poetry at you. So I want to talk to you about my own journey to it as well. Um, yeah, I started writing at a, in Chinatown in, in, in Honolulu at a Mark's Garage. It's a, just like a little spot where we would gather to kind of share stories. Um, and I want to share, after that one poem, I just want to share with y'all, if you're ever thinking about writing poetry, the first rule is that there are no wrong answers. When you're talking about your history and you're creating Poetry for me is, I think, one way in which I reclaim the narrative that I've been told. Uh, one, one thing that I've always been told is that we, we don't have a voice or that, that no one wants to listen to us. And poetry told me, too bad. We are going to have a voice and we are going to stand up. So um, yeah, I ramble. I'm gonna do another poem so I don't keep rambling. Um, yeah. So I've been thinking a lot about love lately and I think what makes it so elusive is that you never know the exact moment when you fall for someone. Is it after the eighth pun that they crack that makes you groan and sigh and choke on your water? Or after the first song you hear them sing, the universe itself splashing out of their mouth and you truly believe that this is what scientists mean when they say the galaxy we live in is always expanding. See, the thing about love is you never know the exact moment when you fall, but somehow you always know just about when it ends. Like, like, like love is realizing that a bird pooped on your head earlier in the day and you have no idea when it, no, that's, no, that's not it. Love, I think, is singing. Most of it is learning how to control your, most of it is learning how to control your own breathing. It is believing you can hit that high note. It is projecting through uncertainty. It is the bravest I know how to be while walking off a cliff. No, that's, that's not it. Love is not bird poop or singing because love is definitely the Olympics. 
because they're both an unending slew of sports. So while composing the About Me section on my Tinder bio, I am dancing back and forth on a gymnastics floor, searching for the contortions of desire. Thinking, if I do well, this could be the face you look at in the morning while you eat your Wheaties. Together, we play shot put with our insecurities, these heavy weights, and we are judged on how far away we can throw them from our bodies. And none of this is why I think falling in love is like the Olympics. Instead, I think of the ways in which they both end. When the buildings fall empty and the places where nations once cheered, cried and broke open together are now just a dirt hangover, a dream dry heaving on the pavement. You see, when a love falls empty, the promises that made this stadium sized heart cheer, cry and break open. Well, they were always just an alarm clock waiting for you to wake up. Six months after the Olympic games left Brazil, the buildings have been vandalized, the chairs ripped out and stolen, those pools are drained and filled with sludge and these messy concrete arteries, they grow dust. We still do the javelin throw sometimes, only now they are words or promises, emails dripping with venom or drunk texts on my birthday. These games aren't so much a place as much as they are a memory, these old homes of spectacle, of hope, now reduced to tendons and muscle training themselves to rubble, just a collection of buildings. And two people, swelling like a heart, training for another year, remember what it was like to be full. But that, that isn't right either. Maybe the only thing I know for sure about love is that I've been wrong every time I've tried to define it. So maybe after all of this, love is just astrology. It is this vast, confusing, and very human study on how we react when orbiting celestial bodies. So tonight, call me a planet returning to myself tonight. I am making a harmony from every wrong turn I've taken. So tonight, y'all, I am Saturn taking off its ring. So all my single planets, throw your hands up. Tonight, when I look for love, I am turning my telescope into a mirror. Tonight, love is learning how to sing, and maybe I am believing I can hit this high note I am projecting through uncertainty, and this, this is the bravest I can be while walking off a cliff. Yeah. <sighs> Hi, friends. Um, <laughs> I'm not used to doing this to a screen. I'm insecure. I need applause. Where are you? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, this is fun. This is fun. Oh, hello. Ooh, dual screen. Aloha. Hello. You caught me trying to play some music because I promise you, and I'm not going to lie when I say this, the words that you have shared are so powerful. You you just apologized and said, you know, you, you just said to us folks that you come in with a downer or you're making sense. No, sweetheart, what you just did was awaken in me something so, that I've kind of left and, and kind of shut out and, mm -hmm ignored if you know what i mean the first poem was oh my gosh like i literally had to walk away grab me my vodka put a little red bull so i could drown a little bit of my emotions and hold back my tears because <laughs> good job to you you have a way with words and it's your words are so powerful and so meaningful that if it touches someone like me with an ice cold heart it'll definitely touch regular people and regular folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just know. Wanna, oh. Go ahead. I just want to say that um, I, it, it was really weird kind of growing up in, in Honolulu when, when I was told like the only two options that I had were to like play football or join the military. And like, I also thank like all of my family members who have joined the military. But for me, it was really important as someone who grew up um, Without really knowing what a Samoan like, military. <laughs> I was like, oh Jesus. Yeah, but I just I don't know. For me, it was really cool because I never I never knew what a Samoan poet looked like until I became one in so many ways. Um, so for me, I, I love kind of like 
uh, I, I now kind of like full time teach poetry with You Speak Seattle. Um, so if, if if any of y'all are seeing this and are like, I want to tell, I want to tell, like tell my story, and you don't think that, that you have awesome. the ability or the tools to, let's jam, y'all. That is Ooh. awesome, and 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 you know, kudos to you, congratulations, and thank you for sharing your talent and that part of you and sharing your story. You know, I sometimes when I try to share my story with the world, they all they do is laugh at it. They get to comedy. I'm like, wow. But I do, I do, um, I love poetry. I have always thought that I have a knack for poetry, but it always comes out. Let me, let me recite you some words yes. and, see the yes. and see what you think. Okay, are you ready? Ready. Last night down in the islands, I sat, I saw a boy walk by me. He walked by, he smiled, he turned and looked at me. I called out to him, come and sit down. He came and sat down next to me. He reached over and touched my, Never mind. We'll, we'll stop it there because it's going to get x-rated. I was anyway. getting excited. Oh my gosh. You got to send me that poem later. Um, and not only am I going to get sued, but Utopia Seattle is going to get sued. So we're going to end it there. <laughs> That's for a whole nother level and a whole nother audience. But thank you so much. I really do appreciate myself, honestly. I, I enjoyed every single word and the talent, the gift you just shared with us. It was it was very pleasant and heartwarming. And I really, and I hope, and now that I, this is our way of meeting, thank you, COVID-19, pretty soon we COVID-20, but this is our way of meeting and I appreciate this. And I appreciate you and the talent and the gift you just shared. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, reading more of your work, hearing more of your work, and I hope everybody else that's listening with us are will be tuning into you. Mm. Thank you so much, William. I really appreciate it, and I'm, I know all of Utopia would really appreciate it too. Yeah, can't wait to connect with you in the future, love. Yes, yes, yes. Aloha, kafsai lava. Kafsai. Oh. Now for me to try to get back in my memory, try to hook it back into my childhood days and the days that I used to write poetry. I wonder if I stuck to it, I would have been as good as William, but I highly doubt it. All I remember is getting wit for the words that came out of my mouth and for the words that came out of the pen and paper that I had, Lord Jesus. Can y'all hear the music that I'm playing? I'm trying to play a little bit of jam to lighten the mood. And again, if you don't have a drink with you, cheers. Cheers to staying safe. Cheers to practicing social distancing. Cheers to washing your hands. Cheers to staying clean. And cheers to staying safe. And cheers to washing everything else on your body, especially your you know what I mean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue on with our um, live luau show. I'm so excited to be here. Now that I've got all the nerves and all the everything else that was titter tattering my body because I had a few problems trying to log on with my phone, I'm calm, I'm collected, I'm ready to play. All right, next on our show, ladies and gentlemen, and all you beautiful folks, and people out there in the world, I bring to you Miss Sole Celestial. Let me read to you and introduce you to Hafa Dai and Buenas. My name is Sole Celestial. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a trans non-binary gala and queer tomorrow, Mitsitsu from the island of Juan, Mariana Islands, currently residing in the Puget Sound, Salish, Puyallup Territory. I work at Ingersoll Gender Center, which is an organization led by and for the trans, trans and gender diverse community. I am a singer, songwriter, and my debut, Channel One Reclaim, is available on SoundCloud. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited for the, our next performer. 
I am pretty sure I bit my tongue trying to pronounce some of the words. I even Googled it. I'm just not that smart girl. I'm just a pretty girl. But please welcome, help me welcome Miss Soleil Celestial. Buenas and half a day. My name is Soli Celestial and tonight I will be making chicken keleguin. Chicken keleguin is a little salty, lots of coconut, unsweetened coconut though. Don't make that mistake. I have chicken. I know it looks like it's not seasoned. Trust me, it's seasoned. It's gonna taste good. I have some onions, green onions, doni, coconut, some lemon, and for an extra kick, you put some lemon powder. My papa, my uncle, and my mom never measured any of their foods. I don't measure either. Without the lemon juice, your keleguin would be very dry, and you do not want dry keleguin. I like to put lots of lemon juice so you get that nice, moist chicken. So I came out to my mom as trans while we were cooking chicken keleguin together in my aunt's kitchen. I was just like, hey mom, um, I'm trans. And she was like, okay, cool. I'll always love you no matter what. I always remember that moment and that's why making chicken keleguin and just eating chicken keleguin really is very important and special to me. Hey mom, I made you chicken keleguin. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just try. Yes, please. Try it. She's like, I'm eating, I'm hungry. <laughs> There's that lemon. Woo! It hasn't soaked yet, that's why. Mm. Put a little bit more lemon to kill the salt. Egg mm -hmm. more lemon juice. Oh, the secret last step is that your mom critiques it and tells you what to do. Oh yeah, every islander mom is definitely gonna tell you how she would have done it. Aloha talofa. Good evening, Sole. Can you hear me? I can't hear her, um, Donato. I can hear them. Can you hear me? There you are. I can hear you now. Half a day. Half a day. <laughs> All right. Now that dish, what was it called again, sweetie? Chicken keleguin. That looked delicious. And that Thank looked interesting you. to me. Now I have a I have a baby stomach, very weak stomach, but I still eat whatever I want to eat. Um, um lactose intolerant, but I still eat cheese because I love cheese, and that's the reason why my husband kind of left me. Wait, no, he left me because um, I wouldn't stop. I couldn't control myself in bed. Not the other way, but the gas and release. Oh, well. But that looks interesting. I want to try it. I'll make you some. I would love to try it. I would love to try it. Now, yeah. um, you said that you have a song coming you're going to play music for us live what song are you playing so i'm going to play the song that was in the background of the video um it's my called song my song called roots um it's part of my debut ep chapter one reclaim that i released last year as part of my um senior project for my undergrad and it talks about well the ep talks about my stories as a trans and queer tomorrow person in the diaspora navigating colonization and you know re-indigenizing within the diaspora so this song roots is about reclaiming myself and also just like really missing home and being away from the islands and that dis disconnect so i'm searching for that so yeah okay well 
The best of luck. I can't wait to hear this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ole, for that. That was beautiful. That was, again, I think tonight's all about reclaiming, and tonight's all the way from the beginning from Tatiana's Ole to Williams, a poem now to this. Everybody's just. I think tonight's about reaching out to me and calming my soul and then everybody else's soul. This is so beautiful. Thank you again, Sully. That was great. Heartwarming. I, 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 here, y'all gonna make me cry and I cannot cry because you, you're gonna turn the beauty into a monster and you'll be watching another episode of Beauty and the Beast. <sighs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was Sol uh, Soleil Celestial with a beautiful song. And of course, she took us into the kitchen and gave us some culinary expertise and some very local foods, which I really want to try now. Um, we're going to hop into a very quick break. And we are going to highlight a Utopia Spotlight for with Utopia one of our sister branches, of course, from our Utopia San Francisco. Um, we're gonna watch a little clip from them and enjoy a little something something from the Utopias around the world. <clears throat> We are a queer trans Pacific Islander led organization here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the United Territories of Pacific Islander Alliance. We are fighting for equitable access to healthcare, housing, employment, and more for the queers and trans Pacific Islanders and all of our Pacific Islanders community here in Las Vegas. We want to be your voice, and we are here for you. We 
also look forward to establish trust and interest between Pacific Islander community and the LGBTQI community that most often share the same issues and concerns. and practices that identify us as indigenous and beauty products. together as a team can collaborate to work together as one to help our community and our fellow Pacific Islanders. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Utopia Las Vegas. I apologize for that intro I gave. I said Frisco, but you know, they're all stuck on the Golden Gate Bridge. They couldn't cross over to come to Seattle. So Frisco made it to Seattle first. But thank you, and they are a new chapter to the Utopia family, and we are all super, super excited to have you a part of the Utopia family as everybody else is. So I can't wait to visit Utopia Las Vegas and have them welcome me. You know, they're one and only still pure and only virgin sister, never been torn and all of the above. Thank you very much, Utopia Las Vegas. And we wish you the best of luck with all our prayers, all of our positive thoughts, and the best vibes that we can put out into the universe and the universe is sent to you. Cheers to the new chapter of Utopia Las Vegas. Now, if I start to butcher names and stuff, again, I shall apologize and I will apologize. It's, again, it's not, it's no no one's fault. It's not really mine either. You can't blame the ed ed education system in Samoa. My teachers beat the hell out of me, teach me. My parents tried their best. But I was more into the looks and into the beauty and into the boys. But where am I now? In the army, surrounded by boys. Dream come true. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The truth shall reveal itself. The truth comes out. Mom, if you're watching this, please log out and tell all my future boyfriends, stay on, stay tuned, more is coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we hop on, well, before we get into another, um, another Utopia highlights, I'm very familiar. I think I'm familiar with our next performer. It's either he follows me on Instagram, or I follow him. I don't know. Either or, one of us follows another. I hope he's following me. For the right reason, that is. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage, our virtual stage. He goes by the pronouns of he, him. And it is, he is Isaac from Isaac, Isaac Music. Not many musical artists get their first, get their start by finding inspiration in the sounds of a vacuum cleaner. But that's exactly how alternative pop artist Isaac got started. At four years old, his mother discovered him sitting on the staircase, humming to himself while matching the pitch of the vacuum as she cleaned their family home. Isaac, who credits his music influences to artists like Mariah Carey, The Carpenters, Amy Winehouse, Loyal Garner, Beyonce, and Frank Ocean, has developed a unique sound never before heard in Hawaii. When asked how he would describe his sound, Isaac says, I'm what would happen if Sam Smith, Teresa Bright, Solange, Maggie Rogers, re-recorded Lady Marmalade. Ooh, now that sounds delicious. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me 
welcome to our virtual stage, the one and only, all the way from the beautiful island of Hawaii, Isaac.
is boots on my own. Thirty one, I'm grown. I've got to get up out of this bed now. Half the year is gone. But I knew so much. Beam in the breezes. I was petrified. And I only wore out my circle. Nostalgia. 
Isaac music. You see this? You see all of this? This is what you just did to me, honey. This is what you just did to me with your music. You've got a fan, everything down. I'm like, oh, Jesus, God. Whew. Lord Jesus, that was awesome. That was amazing. That just touched me. I think somewhere here. But in here it did, and then somewhere here also. Talofa, talofa. Talofa. <laughs> Aloha. <Ooh>. Aloha. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I am okay. I'm pretty tight, but okay as well. <laughs> Listen, you have been cracking me up. Like, I have been dying over here. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm happy because <laughs> I'm just scared in my house alone. The boys are gone. <laughs> you know, no one, my bed's going to be empty and cold tonight unless I get same, on Tinder or something and same, find me a pocket for the evening. <laughs> but, you know. That music, though, honey, that music, oh, thank you my, so much. my favorite from the selection was the very first song, and that was, oh, God. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, and I yeah, see so, William just, I see William I will, just moving on yeah, his Will's. screen, and Soleil on their screen, She, <laughs> uh, they were just jamming, and I believe Tati was just moving as well. Like, okay. <laughs> All these fine uh, folks were just up uh, on it. I'm so grateful to be a part of this group full of such beautiful people and artists and Hi. creatives. Yeah. I, how, how, so in your bio, it says that you have spent years honing your craft and you began performing in local venues across Hawaii in early 2013. Since then, you've become an award-winning performer with multiple local, national, and international tours under your belt. Mm -hmm. This Utah born, you were born in Utah, yes. Hawaii yes. singer, songwriter, released your second album in and Bougainvillea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in October 2019. That is that is great accomplishments and achievements. I, I have to applaud you for all of that. Thank you. Me, you literally, as William said, you brought all the boys to the yards, honey. <laughs> where are they? I'm still single. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm looking as well. I'm like, where? <laughs> oh, so what brought you, like, what, what started your whole musical career? Um, well, I, um, you know, I've been singing my whole life. Singing was kind of a way for me to express myself, but more so when I started songwriting, it became a way for me to hear my own stories being told to me because in mainstream music, I wasn't, I, di I didn't hear my own story being told to me. So, you know, the closest that I would get would be through female singers singing about their unrequited love for men or just, you know, being in love with another guy, you know? And so I never heard my own story. The only way I heard a bit of my story was through these beautiful, strong women who were singing about it. Um, and so when I started to songwrite, I wrote about my story and that was a way for me to hear my own story being told. But I, I grew up singing my whole life. Um, my grandmother was a musician. My, I come from a big family of musicians. Um, so music was always a part of my life. Um, I tried to run away from learning like ukulele and, and playing piano and uh, learning Hawaiian music, which I really, really regret in my adult life. But um, through that, I, I came to my own uh, my own form of artistic expression. So that's why when you hear my music, it doesn't have the that typical island feel because I wanted to contribute a different sound to the soundscape here in Hawaii because I, I feel like we have so much to offer. Sound. Thank you. It's a very beautiful sound. Like oh, when um, William performed and recited his poems, I retracted back and I said, I had a, a touch and feel for poetry when Soleil sang their song or, um, and made me feel a certain way. Like I had, and then you, and then Tatiana, when did the Oli, I'm like, I wanted to do that too. And now you hear you sing, I'm like, I wanted to do that too. There's a lot of things that you beautiful folks are doing that I wanted to do, but I could never accomplish. And it was all because 
I didn't have the voice for it, but people just kept laughing at me. So I figured might as well just make people laugh. Make people laugh. That's I And guess. that is an art in itself, though. That is an art in itself to make people laugh. Yeah, I don't want them laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of the time we're laughing with you. And by the way, yeah. I followed you first because I saw an Instagram post of all of y'all in New York. Uh, there was some fat, I think it was fashion week or something. And I just, I saw the most beautiful thing in the world. It was tapa all over New York. It was like kappa and like just beautiful Polynesian nests all over New that York. Was the, and I think, and I think it was your world crew. Pride. What was it for? It was for World Pride that was hosted in New York or held in New York last year to commemorate the 50 years of the Stonewall. Yes. And I was invited by Utopia New York and its beautiful members to march with them and represent American Samoa as Fiji was represented, so, um, the beautiful kingdom of Donga was represented, Tahiti, Tokelau, mm -hmm. the Cook Islands. And I walked with um, Samuel Emanuel uh, to represent American Samoa. And it was such an honor. Oh, it was so beautiful. I was gagged when I saw <laughs> everything. I just was. I just felt so happy to see that representation on such a huge stage. And so yeah. I like, I stalked the whole, I was like looking at all the tags. I'm like, who are these people? I need to follow them immediately. I want to be friends. Like, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to yeah. see, to see that and make a connection across the ocean. Well, I'm happy because I follow you. I, now where we follow each other and I follow you. I see a lot of your lives and listen to your music. I'm like, okay, he's got it going. <laughs> But stay on with me. Are you gonna you're gonna have another perform you're gonna sing another song, right? Oh, am I? <laughs> oh, I'm asking. Oh, I'm I mean if lost. that's I think uh, we're going to say farewell soon. Yeah. But before we say farewell, Isaac and I will have to remind you all. Remember at the link at the link below, yes. we're going before we say farewell, we're gonna have another break, another um utopia highlight. But there remember the link below. That we do have our raffles going on, and we will announce the very, very last Friday of the show. We're going to have a reveal and announce our winners. We have two round trip tickets sponsored by Alaska Airlines yes. that will take you anywhere around the whole wide United States of America. <laughs> but also travel. I think it's first class and a half, so it might be coach, it might be half a first class is something you just get treated well <laughs> by alaska airlines but the, the the tickets are raffled individually and separately it's ten dollars a ticket and also utopia seattle does a lot of fundraising because they there is so much that they do to give back to the beautiful folks um in in washington and seattle area also around the united states so if you would like to donate we do have our links below as well that you would that we ask you to donate whatever you can. We do have different packages that are available for you to become a sponsor. We do have different types of activities that you can be a part of, but anything that you can give can definitely help Utopia Seattle and help Utopia in general, help the people around um, the Washington state and the QTPI trans and queer community around the United States period. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, please put your hands together for the beautiful sound of Isaac Music. Mahalo, thank you thank so you much. So Mahalo, much. Thank you so much. I look forward into I look forward to connecting with you more. I do too as well. Good night.
All right, Lee. Uh, folks, you beautiful folks. It has been such a beautiful evening with great performances, with great um, music, with great poetry, the use of words, the language. But you folks, we're not done yet. We have um, Tatiana that opened us with an Oli and introduced us to our show with an Oli. Then now we'll close it off with a hula. And that is something exciting to um, folks. Please welcome to the stage the beautiful Tatiana. Oh my gosh, I hope you guys can see me. <laughs> All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How about a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Tatiana, that was gorgeous. That was beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mahalo Thank you for that um, closing and farewell hula. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I. I feel very proud to, you know, be able to share the art of hula with everybody, with the world, can we say. Um, a little bit of my background. Uh, growing up, hula uh, really wasn't an option for me. It was something that my grandmother kind of instilled in me at, such, at a very young age. Um... 
But that song in particular that I just danced to. Well, your grandmother did a wonderful job of teaching you the art of hula. Mm. That was that was beautiful. That was a very beautiful, very graceful, and gentle sway of the hands and the arms and the hips. Everything was beautiful. All of you beautiful folks that um, performed tonight, we were very grateful and we say thank you to all of you and to all of the beautiful people, the beautiful folks that have joined us tonight in celebrating Utopia and celebrating the people of the Pacific and we as Polynesian, as Melanesian, Micronesian, just people of the world in general, we thank you for all joining us. We are truly grateful to all of our sponsors. We are very thankful to and grateful for Utopia Seattle, the CEO, and to all the board members and the members of Utopia Seattle for making this possible for us to share the art of music, the art of poetry, the art of dance, the art of cooking, and you know, everything that we were able to share with um, each other and for us to learn from one another and we are truly grateful. Um, again, once again, to all you beautiful folks, the link is below. Remember we have our raffle going on. We will be announcing our winners of the two, uh, round trip tickets. And I'm pretty sure we will have ma more magical prizes. Might be a man, might be a woman, might be something. I don't know. We have a lot of fairies in this world. There's a lot of magic in this world. Something just might pop up that will entice you to buy even more tickets, right? And remember, you are. We welcome you to. We welcome you to please donate to Utopia Seattle and to help us help everyone that we can financially, mentally, emotionally, just to be able to reach out and to. Clasp that hand and say, we are here for you, as we want for you to say, we are here for each other. Thank you once again to you wonderful folks, to you beautiful people, and join me in for this wave goodbye. So we'll start off with William. Yeah. Say goodbye. Farewell, friends. <clears throat> Sole. Would you like to say goodbye? Thank you so for having me. Thank you as well. Isaac, aloha. Aloha.